Hello guys, how are you doing? My name is Henry from Success Inspiration and welcome to the Entrepreneur's Chat. And this is basically one of our live recordings, you know, from TikTok. So each and every weekday, we have uh, live sessions with various entrepreneurs, subject matter experts to discuss different, you know, issues that, you know, an entrepreneur you know, is, you will definitely have to know, right? So guys, man, I mean, if this is your first time here, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, right? And guys, you know, the, this is actually, you know, a session which is about an hour long and you will basically, you know, learn on the subject matter, you know, from someone who's actually gone, you know, the distance and actually done something, you know, which is uh, create a business. So guys, man, enjoy the session. And yeah, just, just, uh, it's live, so we're interacting with different people. You know, sometimes, you know, different things happen, you know. But anyway, the conversation will definitely continue. So, man, let's jump into it. Ah, uh, man, so today, guys, we're going to be having a discussion on the imposter syndrome with organizational psychologist, award-winning organizational psychologist, Fiona Martin. So, man, that's what we're going to be doing. So I see she is already here on the chat. So I've just sent an invite. So we're going to just get started. We're going to get cracking. If we can just start by maybe just introducing yourself, Fiona. Thank, thanks a lot for having me here. Um, my name is Fiona Martin. I am an organizational psychologist or also referred to as a work psychologist. And what that means is we solve problems in the workplace using principles of psychology in a, in a nutshell. Um, my background predominantly or my area of specialization is career development so I'm a career coach I help people navigate various career intersections and I also am a talent management expert uh, and that means from the corporate side I help companies set up processes programs that help to manage their programs and then on top of that I also own a uh, a career academy so i've got a couple of online courses that i run i will not run that that i have currently um that um basically can be done on demand so in essence it's giving out career information um for those that want to learn on various topics yeah, and i think all around a, a career a, a career content creator sorry that's like a tongue twister so that's yeah really everything that you need to know about me awesome did you say an award-winning organizational psychologist <laughs> No, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Awesome, man. But hey, before you, you, we continue, I know, I know you've got some, uh, you know, some other, you know, things that that are happening, you know, around. It's quite a tight time today, but we're gonna we're gonna work uh, to push so that we can get things going uh, because uh, you know you've got other you know commitments happening. But anyway, you know, I just want to start by congratulating you for fifty-seven thousand two hundred followers here on TikTok. I mean, and this is only, I think you posted your first video on the 23rd of April. So, yeah, yeah. 23rd or 24th. I mean, that's, so that's that's like how many months? Four months? I think three, three months. Yeah, yeah three months. About three months. Wow. Now, nah, that's 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 amazing. That's Thank amazing. You, yeah. So, so, so uh, like a big, big congratulations about that. <laughs> Thank congratulations you. yeah so i don't know how does how has that impacted like obviously your business or your like, i don't know how, how has that impacted what you're doing in terms of just uh being able to get you know your tiktok going yes yeah, so one look, secret I, in one secret to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so look yeah I, I must say i i didn't have any intentions of going on any additional social media platforms because as you know running social media is, is a lot of time um and I run all my platforms by myself. So I was mostly concentrating on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and Instagram, I guess, to a lesser extent. So, in fact, when we had our conversation initially and you wanted me to do a live and you were like TikTok and I was like, ah, and I didn't really honestly think that it was a place where people were interested in educational co uh, content. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, since joining, it's been really amazing. Um, there's a whole, I think, community of people on TikTok that are not on other platforms. I, I truly do believe that. And yeah, it's really done amazing, I guess, for my business as well. So in terms of my coaching business that I run and also even other corporate work as well. So a lot of queries coming through from TikTok. So it's really been, I guess, yeah, a good investment, um, so to speak, and also reaching a, a whole wide audience that is not on other platforms. Awesome. So what's your one secret? Just one. Give us one, one, one secret. Secret to, to, success. to success. Your success on TikTok. 
<laughs> oh, I, I think consistency. So posting consistently. I must be honest, in the beginning, I was a little bit skeptical and I didn't want, I was like, I don't want to create videos for another platform and et cetera. But um, I took some of my Instagram reels and I was like, let me just actually test this thing out. And the reels did very well. So I would say consistency. I think for me with anything that really is um, the recipe to it. And don't worry about the quality of content, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes it's about finding your feet. Um, so I also had to learn the, the formats for TikTok because I was not familiar with them. But definitely consisting in ensuring that I post every single day. Um, that has probably been, I think, the, the secret that I can share. <laughs> awesome, awesome. No, thank you. Thank you about that. No, we'll do a whole live with you about, <laughs> about TikTok. You know? <laughs> you know, TikTok, social media, because, man, you're doing quite, you know, a very good uh, job there, an amazing job. Uh, so, yeah, guys, I mean, if you guys also want to learn about social media, so, man, we are going to be having a physical event. I just Let me just talk about this right now. So, we're going to have a physical event, guys, an uh, entrepreneur's chat live event. You know, we're going to be having it on the 1st of October. That's going to be on Saturday, uh, the 1st of October, in four ways, right? In four ways. So this is just an opportunity, guys, to learn about different subjects, you know, leveraging social media for your business, you know, building generational businesses, and uh, also, you know, just having that entrepreneurial mindset. And we're going to be having various coaches. I mean, guys like Life Coach Sibu here, you know, they're going to be talking to us. You know, guys, you know, come, you know, learn with Za, man. It's going to be dope, man. Coach has already bought his tickets, man. He even bought extra tickets. <laughs> and I know some guys here are already coming. So, man, that's going to be awesome. So, guys, if you want to learn more about that, you know, we've got uh, a first mover's advantage special. You know, the cost of that ticket is 450 rands. It includes all this amazing content, networking with people that are in your industry. You know, with guys in the mining space, in the restaurant space, in all these spaces, coaching, you know, finance, you get to come physically and ask questions, right? And connect with people, build genuine connections. So Fiona, man, I know you've got, uh, you know, you, 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 you know, there, there are things happening. So, so you might be pressed for time. So let's, let's just get it going as an entrepreneur. Let's obviously in that context, you know, also in the work, it's all the same, right? But what is the imposter syndrome and why, why, why have you dedicated, you know, some of your time to actually talk about this? Yeah, so look, imposter syndrome is something that I discovered a couple of years ago. And for me, as someone who experienced it, um, it kind of made sense. I was like, oh, my goodness. So there is actually a name or, 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 or this phenomenon is documented because I, I just couldn't understand. So imposter syndrome is where you feel that you are undeserving of what you've achieved. Right. So you feel like everything that you've achieved is by luck or you at the right place at the right time. Right. So in essence, it's an inability to internalize your success. So therefore, even when you've done well, either as an entrepreneur or in the corporate space, you find it difficult to actually, I guess, appreciate that, right? Such that you feel like a fraud. You feel that, you know, and, and hence the word in, imposter. So you feel that you're not as competent or as smart as people think that you are. And very soon, you've got this, you know, fear that you're going to be masked as a fraud, that any time now, they're going to see that I'm not such a great entrepreneur, they're going to see that I'm not such a great public speaker, whatever it is that you do, right? Uh, and this is even in spite of evidence to your success, right? So, so imposter syndrome doesn't have, the, it's not about the fact that you haven't achieved enough. In fact, we find it more prominent in high achievers, people that have done really well, but their mind or their level of confidence doesn't align with what they've achieved. So therefore, you know, they have this perpetual fear that someone's going to discover that, you know, they're not as great as others think that they are. And I mean, I will tell you, give you an example. I started uh, sharing content a lot on LinkedIn. That's where I kind of, I guess, started building my brand. And um, then I joined an organization and I had a lot of people from that organization, I guess just a lot of people generally that followed me on LinkedIn that used to, um, you know, be fans of my content. And I had people start reaching out to me saying, oh my goodness, Fiona, I, I want to have a session with you, you know, to discuss their career, et cetera. And the immediate reaction to me was, I wasn't flattered about it, right? I suddenly had this fear that, oh my goodness, so she actually wants to have a session with me and, you know, get me to coach them through their career. And I felt that in that session, what if I'm not as impressive as they think that they are? Because they came to me, they're excited, they've been seeing my content, right? So I always had this feeling of not being good enough and almost undeserving of their attention, right? So.
whenever I got attention or someone would invite me, for example, to an event, then I would see the panel. Then I'll be like, oh, my goodness, they want me to speak like next to all these people. Right. And I felt that I was undeserving um, and that I wasn't really as good as, the, you know, as they thought that I was. Right. So it's, you know, it's the, the more you achieve. Imposter syndrome doesn't get any better, especially if you're not aware of it, right? So sometimes we think, well, if I work harder, if I do this, have more accolades, imposter syndrome is going to get this. In fact, it gets worse because it's how your mind is orientated to the way that you feel, right, um, about your achievement. So it's almost like, a, as I mentioned earlier, an inability to internalize your success. So it doesn't matter how much you achieve. If your mind cannot internalize and actually appreciate how well you have done, how accomplished you are, how skilled you are at whatever you know thing that you're skilled at, then you're constantly going to have that um, feelings of imposter syndrome. And the, the danger or the impact of it is you disqualify yourself from things that you qualify for. So when people started approaching me on LinkedIn, wanting coaching sessions, wanting me to do stuff, I almost in some instances wanted to to hesitate and say, oh, I'm not available because I feared that perhaps I was not going to perform to their expectations. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's disqualifying yourself and also not going for opportunities that you could probably very well perform in because of that not feeling good enough. Mm -hmm. Wow, man. I mean, that's 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 crazy. And, and, and OK, maybe let's start with OK. What what perpetuates it? I don't know. You choose which which question you're going to start trying to address. What perpetuates it, or the effects of it? Good. So, what causes uh, imposter syndrome? So, there's a couple of things um, that you know are the root cause. People who have perfectionist tendencies. So, if you're someone that's a perfectionist. Uh, they typically have a higher likelihood of experiencing imposter syndrome because perfectionists are always setting the bar high for themselves. And even when they meet that bar or they achieve that level, right, it's never good enough. It's always like, what's next? What's next? Right. So there isn't really a time to appreciate your achievements because it's always what's next. Um, so people with perfectionist tendencies who, you know, they, they, perfectionists struggle a lot with failure they've got this um you know unhealthy relationship with failure such that even a small mistake right let's say if they've done 99 percent of the work well but there's like one small mistake to them it it, it, they, it feels like a total failure right so people mm. with perfectionist tendencies uh, have that thing of it's never good enough so yes i've achieved my dream role i've taken my business to where it needs to be but there's, there's never that good enough element because it's always the what's next what's next right um uh, so that it's also for people for whom success came quickly. So maybe your your business took off and it flew way beyond what you, you imagined it would, right? Very quick. So when success comes quickly, that also is a cause for imposter syndrome because often our minds, I guess, do not catch up with all the rapid changes, you know, particularly where, where you, you rapidly achieve success. Another one as well uh, is, and this is quite a common one, being a a minority group in a particular industry or in a particular role. So if let's say I'm the only woman in the department, um, I'm the only black person, I'm the only black entrepreneur that is in this space or one of the few black entrepreneurs. So where you feel that, you know, you are underrepresented, you often feel that you don't belong there. In fact, we, we find this a lot with first generation graduates, right? Mm. You, especially they go to university you know, uh, and especially if you're, you know, at a university where people are coming from other communities, different socioeconomic backgrounds. So mm -hmm. therefore, because you're coming from a different background, you almost feel undeserving. And even though you get your degree, you qualify, you do well, you get a really great job, um, you generally perpetually feel that you don't belong, uh, especially in environments that are not inclusive or that are not very transformed. So it gives people the perception that I shouldn't be here and I don't belong here in any minute now. I'm going to get exposed as a fraud, right? And then the mm. other thing, which is more, I guess, wow. in terms of our upbringing is people with high achieving parents, right? So, so your upbringing can also cause uh, imposter syndrome, particularly for families that place a very big achievement, uh, sorry, a, a big emphasis on achievement, right? Um, and also parents that either overpraise uh, or, you know, they, they go from extremes of overpraising you and over criticizing you. Um, so, so, so in that essence, um, having that, uh, what you call it, that upbringing where, you know, you have the expectation to perform, you're not allowed to fail, you receive high criticism, especially for not being an achiever, sure. whether it's academically, whatever wow. the case might be. Yeah. So it does increase that feelings of fraud, I guess, of feeling like a fraud. 
uh, you know, because of those mixed messages that you get when you were younger around being overpraised or I guess being over criticized, especially when it comes to academic. Wow, man, that's 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 amazing, guys. If you're getting value from this content, guys, please follow Fiona Martin here, man. She's got amazing content, guys. I mean, fifty-six thousand followers in 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 three months. You know, that's just you know that's value. She's it's testament to value. So, man, please follow her right now, right? Uh, my said coach also saying critical parents. Tula, thank you for the likes. You know, Bangali, thank you for the likes. Yulin Pabu, thank you for the likes. Black network guys thank you for the likes guys you can like the live just tap on your screens as many times as you like man tiktok doesn't stop you let's share the live guys as well there's definitely someone else who's dealing with this right now who needs to be assisted with uh this ish coach is saying ish the psychological minority complex and that is saying yo <laughs> where the danger is right but anyway let's carry on so so yeah, so 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 you talked about in, in one of these four causes that you talked about, the perfectionist tendencies. For me, it seems as if it's it's the one which is really internal. Uh, which you know, what what causes that? What causes that? Because I know success came quickly. Yes, and being a minority group, high achieving parents, it's like sort of some sort of external factors. Mm. But what causes the perfectionist tendencies in people? Yeah, so look, the causes of perfectionism uh, probably come from also environmental, of, you know, it's like your environment, right? So you are bringing shapes a lot in terms of how you are as an adult. So it, it there's a root cause of that. It also could be, um, you know, personality related. So some people have personality traits that are more prone to perfectionism. And, you know, and because people... Generally, I think, you know, you think, well, what's wrong with being a perfectionist? Because it just means I want everything to be perfect. I want everything to, you know, to be well done, et cetera, right? But here's what the impact, especially of perfectionism does, right? Um, or uh, we're having an unhealthy relationship with failure is you, 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 people with perfection, people who are perfectionist have a higher tendency to experience exhaustion and burnout, right? Because they're always, um, because they always feel that they need to outperform on everything, right? So in that regard, whether it's a small task or a big task, right? Because their their self-esteem is orientated to that performance. So it's very much their identity, their self-esteem is orientated to that. So even let's say a task that you could just do okay at, right? You, you can do a good, decent job and it doesn't have to be perfect. But because of the effort that a perfectionist exerts, right? So they don't even discriminate between, okay, let me put a lot of effort because this is a high impact task. Or let me put, you know, medium effort here because it's a low impact. You know, it's not something that's going to change the world or that's game changing for my work or for my business, right? So because they don't have a disparate, um, they don't, they don't, uh, what you call it, regulate the effort that they put for different things. Everything must be perfect. And as mm. I mentioned earlier, even if there's like 1% or let's say the thing is like 90% great and maybe there's 10% that's not so great. For them, it's an all or nothing. So it's either something is good or it's not, right? They don't have, the, you know, I guess they struggle with that ability of saying, you know, seeing like a nuance between, okay, this went well and this didn't go well, right? Because of that constant fear of failure. And then what of, often happens as well, and for those of you who are perfectionists, I'm sure you can relate to this. And this is also for people that have imposter syndrome. You then... In, you know, when you approach a task, um, you know, when you're, I guess, running your business or even doing your day-to-day -day activities, right, you have what we call maladaptive perf perfectionist behaviors. And this means over-preparing, right? You ruminate over mistakes. So let's say I'm having a meeting with a, you know, a, a stakeholder. I'm having a meeting with someone that maybe I'm looking for funding for business. So, of course, you're going to prepare and do a good, decent job at preparing. But what perfectionist does, or even people with imposter syndrome, is they go the when I say the extra mile, this is not on a good sense. They now overwork themselves because they fear that one little thing is going to go wrong. They now end up, you know, going into burnout and exhaustion because they're always overestimating the impact of their mistakes, right? So it's almost like working more than you need to because you feel you need to know everything. So I'll give you an example. Um, in instances where let's say I would be doing a presentation, uh, let's say when I was in corporate and I need to present something on a solution, right? Or even let's say with a client, I'm dealing with a client who has a particular career related issue. So although I know the stuff, right? I know it in my sleep, you know, I've been practicing it. I've done it well, right? This is what perfectionism and imposter syndrome does. So now you've got this client, you know that the client, you're going to see them later on, they're paying you money. You feel like an imposter. You're somehow feeling not worthy of this opportunity. So now here you go spending the whole night 
reading every so let's say i have a client i'm dealing with who we need to to tackle imposter syndrome i spend the whole night reading every single thing i can find about imposter syndrome then end up sleeping at three o'clock right which is not necessary because one you already have the foundation knowledge right you've been doing this over and over again but because of that perfectionist tendencies you now have the the thinking that well what if something comes up in the session that i don't know about or that i can't answer that i don't realize right so that over preparation leads to burnout because you know, at some point, it's it, it doesn't add any additional value, right? And it's also about lacking of trusting yourself, right? So I'm not saying that don't be diligent, don't prepare. But there's some preparation which is driven by the fear of failure or the fear that someone's going to ask me something and I don't know it. Then I'm going to look like a completely incompetent, right? Uh, which is, of course, a distortion because even the foremost experts... Uh, you know, if someone asks you something about your business that you haven't thought about, it doesn't mean you're not a good business person. It just means you have not thought about it, right? But yeah. because perfectionists feel that they, everything needs to be right, I need to know everything, I need to have an answer for everything, it then creates those behaviors where they burn themselves out. They have anxiety even around failure. So one small thing went wrong in a meeting. Now they spend the next week ruminating over it, beating themselves up about it, Um, you know, and, and actually overlooking the fact that, well, actually 90% of it actually went quite well, right? But they have a tendency to over, what you call it, to, to, to they they give prominence to, to failures, right? To the little failures, things. To the little things, right? So it's, it's an unhealthy relationship with failure, as I mentioned. And also because what happens with imposter syndrome is we tend to forecast what other people believe of us, right? So if you're Henry and you're an entrepreneur and they say you're doing your event in October, right? What someone with imposter syndrome would do is they will spend the entire time forecasting what are people going to expect of me? Am I going to live up to those expectations? What if this, what if that, right? And, you know, of course, those sound like good questions to ask if you're preparing for an event, if you want to do well, right? But it gets to a point where we are now driven by what we think other people expect of us, right? So they say, well, you know, I'm Fiona Martin. Um, I'm an award-winning career co- coach. So therefore, people are going to expect this extremely high standard. And in many instances, we set those standards for ourselves, right? So some people are not even thinking about that. But you're sitting there, um, you know, putting immense and extreme pressure on yourself to perform, you know, everything perfectly at a very high level. And you often find that when people with imposter syndrome, they say they come out of a meeting, they come out of a presentation, instead of feeling good, like, oh, okay, that actually went well. You know, I got to sit mm. in front of a CEO. They have the opposite, when now they start to nitpick what went wrong, do they deserve to be there? People must really be thinking that they're useless, etc. Right? So then it, it goes into this effect where, um, what you call it, they spend time ruminating, which is like your, your thoughts go over and over again, right? Beating yourself up. Like meditating. You actually, yeah, exactly. Or, or meditating on the failure. And in many instances, it's not even a reflection of what happened, right? So I often find, you know, when people with imposter syndrome come and they're criticizing themselves uh, about something or the other, very often when I ask certain questions, right, they almost get shocked. Like, oh, actually, you're right. I wasn't looking at it in that way, right? Because they have a, a fixation on on failure, right? Or fixation on what went wrong and the fixation on, in fact, perfectionists are their biggest, are their own biggest critics, so a lot of the things they criticize themselves on, other people are not even thinking about, right? Other people are not even sure. expecting that level of, of perfection. Like no one, so, no one knows your presentation. Like it's your yeah, presentation. Exactly. No one knows it. So why are you <laughs> stressing about it? You know, it's kind of crazy. But I just want to thank, I uh, just want to acknowledge that uh, Life Coach Sibu, thank you for the gifts that you're giving. Fiona, Nuko as well, and Len with the team. You know, thank you for the gifts, guys. I mean, if you guys finding value, like let's gift, guys. Let's gift. Let's do that, right? And thank you for the likes. Tula Trumi, Bangani, Luca, thank you for the likes. Man, you guys are doing the most. 10,400 likes already. You guys are doing the most. Thank you. And then with Dineo, thank you for sharing the live and everyone else who's been sharing the live. And then with Dineo says, uh, I love that we're attacking all aspects that affect the entrepreneur. That's so true. And uh, Life Coach is saying that that's a horrible way to live. Because, I mean, besides like the mental health aspect that you are actually describing here, which I think can actually lead to other things, you know, especially maybe in the future. I, I think things like, you know, you know, your your bipolar depression, that sort of vibe. Um, you know, I think both these things sometimes you might they end up being bad, but they can start somewhere, right? This overthinking anxiety. So I mean, what you are really describing is a lot of, you know, mental health issues that can arise out of this imposter syndrome. 
and, uh, and and not even getting to celebrate, like you say that you've met the CEO, you know, celebrate, you know, no one else is meeting the CEO, but it's like robbing you from that, uh, you know, time of celebration and uh, and, and self, uh, like fulfillment, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And remember with perfectionist, especially, or even I guess when you experience imposter syndrome, like nothing is ever good enough. So you you don't actually come to a point where you're like, okay, I've achieved this milestone. I'm going to bask in it. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm actually really going to to internalize and appreciate the fact that I worked hard. I had a good strategy. You know, I did ABC, right? So giving yourself the credit for what you have done, right? But there isn't a time for that because even when they achieve the milestone, it's always like, well, what's next? What's next, right? Which is, of course, as you mentioned, an unhealthy way to, to live, right? Um, and, you know, as you mentioned, puts you at... Uh, puts you at risk of, you know, burnout, puts you at risk of, you know, and in many instances, it's about trusting yourself because I found that I would work extra hard preparing for things I didn't need to prepare for because I knew them, right? So, you know, it's, it's, sometimes you don't trust yourself. You're like, well, but I'm an expert. I've done this like a hundred times, but, you know, you, you always have the tendency of, you know, maybe there's something else I don't know. Maybe there's something else I don't know. And I also, I, I used to think, well, that's a good thing because I like preparing, you know, which I generally, I'm, I'm generally a person that likes to prepare. But in some instances, I had to stop myself and realize that, no, but you know this stuff, right? Um, and it would even be validated because I would go into that meeting and there wouldn't really be, you know, things that would be thrown at me that I was like completely oblivious to. But at the same time, even if they wasn't, I would prepare myself. And this is often what I do with coaching clients, particularly when they have an unhealthy uh, relationship with fear, is to say, well, let's say someone asks you something you don't know, you haven't thought about. That's OK, right? It, it, it's, you know, people have a, they overestimate the impact of, you know, failure of a mistake that you made. Well, are you now going to be considered, you know, is your entire professional identity going to be ruined or tarnished because there's one thing you didn't think about, right, in that presentation when someone was asking you about your business? No, and in fact, you can very well say, well, I haven't thought about that. Uh, let mm. me apply my mind and get back to you. And it's okay. So I I release myself from those perfectionist tendencies. So now when I go into meetings, when I'm doing something or the other that I'm feeling imposter syndrome about, I tell myself I don't actually have to be perfect and there might be some things that might not go my way, but that's okay. It's not a reflection on my entire career identity, right? It's just a matter of I didn't know that small thing or even let's say if it's a big thing, right? Uh, so so almost preparing for those moments uh, and I guess not beating myself up um, around, yeah, not beating myself up around having to know everything or everything having to go well. And in many instances, for those of you that are entrepreneurs, right, you might get contracts or jobs or people approaching you for things that you feel oh my goodness this is way beyond my scope right but I always say to people and you know and in fact half the time it's not even that it's beyond your scope it's not mo mostly because of you know your inability I guess the way you evaluate yourself is distorted right so you feel like oh my goodness they want me to do this big contract or they want me to do this you know big assignment or whatever the case might be right and I always say to people particularly where they uh, experience imposter syndrome. I remember actually a coaching client feeling that they had imposter syndrome about the appointment or the job that they had. They felt they didn't deserve it. And that, in fact, the, their sentiment was, well, there wasn't really anybody else. I kind of feel like I was like, just, you know, they just chose me because there was nobody else, you know, that, that sure. could have done like, the job. Like a, like a token, like, you know, especially with things like BE and whatever. You just feel like uh, maybe it's just a token appointment or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And I normally say if someone approaches you, in fact, this this actually happened, um, I think it was like a few years ago, I was invited to an event and it had a lot of like, like very like people I look up to in my industry. I was like, I, I didn't think I deserve to be sitting on the table with those individuals because I'm like, oh, my goodness, these people are so accomplished. Are, are they sure they I, I, I can actually sit and also give an opinion on whatever the country and what the topic was. Right. But here's my sentiment when someone approaches you with something that you feel like, you know, this is beyond me. I'm always like that person that approached you, do you think they want to get a good service, right? So if you're doing events, right, and they somehow come across your page or they've been following you, so do you think that person wants a good event? And the answer is yes, right? The person is not just willy-nilly approaching. They've also applied their mind before they approach you for the task, right? So if, mm. if you're not giving yourself credit, you know, something impressed them. Right. There was something about you that impressed them to approach you and say, can you do this task for me, I guess, in your business as, as an entrepreneur? Right. So don't disqualify that even if you devalue yourself, 
don't undermine that people actually, you know, if, if someone's going to pay you for something, they've thought about it, right? They're not just, you know, they're not going to waste their money on someone that they don't think is competent. And I'm always like, if someone has approached you because they feel you have the competence to do something, it's not your job to disqualify yourself. And of course, this doesn't mean that, you know, take things that are beyond your scope or that you know that you, you can't genuinely do. But I'm always like, you know, learn to trust, I guess not to trust in, in a way, but yeah, learn to trust other people's opinions or valuations of you. And when I was dealing with my imposter syndrome, which is still there, I don't know that it ever goes away. But now that I'm aware of it, I know the ways to tackle it, right? So it, it doesn't completely disappear. But at least now I can recognize when it's occurring, then I know ways to deal. I know ways to deal with it, right? Um, mm. Such that even when I feel that, oh, this is like too big for me, uh, or, you know, am I really going to do a good job, right? And and very often when I reflect, I'm like, okay, what does this role require, right? I, and I'll... I'll give you an example i remember i was um when i was still in corporate there was a promotion that had come in fact there was a position that had come up right and because yeah. of my imposter syndrome i didn't i mean i didn't think that i, I was I, I was qualified to apply for it and um i remember my boss at that time you know i went into office and she's like oh fiona did you see the vacancies open um, are you going to apply so then I was like, I was quite taken aback. I was like, ah, I don't know. I'll see. I'll think about it, right? I mean, in fact, I wasn't actually going to think about it. I, I I, just didn't think I was equipped to do it. Then she asked me like two more times because she wasn't seeing my application coming through. And then I had to step back and reflect. And I was like, and in fact, some of my other colleagues said, oh, Fiona, you're applying for that job, right? So I was like, wait a minute. I've had about four or five people keep asking me about applying for this job. Am I, am I, am I not seeing something that they are? And that was actually the thing. I didn't see myself in that leadership role, right? Which is why I wasn't, um, you know, which is why I, I didn't think I qualified. And then I had to have a reflection moment to say, actually, what does this job require? Let me, you know, just engage my imposter syndrome in terms of why I feel I'm not good enough. And when I looked at the job description, when I looked at the tasks, I was like, well, but this is stuff that I know how to do. Like, th there's actually nothing here. If I really broke it down, right? I think the title was intimidating me. But when I broke it down, I'm like, this is stuff I know how to do. And the stuff that I didn't know how to do, I knew that I had the aptitude to learn, right? So, mm -hmm. yes, I might not have done this and that. But actually, this is something I know if I put a plan in place, I'm a learning oriented person. I can easily learn it, right? It's not something that is impossible for me to acquire the skill. Then I ended up applying. And long story short, I got the job, right? So in that regard, when... When you get people paying you compliments or saying things that, you know, you struggle to internalize, right? Um, it likely is that you experience imposter syndrome because in many instances, other people see your greatness, they see your accomplishments and your skills. Uh, and they're like, but why are you not doing that? Why are you not doing that? Because you feel that, well, I don't, I don't think that I'm qualified to do it or I don't think that I'm great enough. So, and for, for areas where you don't meet 100%, so perfectionists often feel that, everything must be 100% before they go for a job, before they, you know, tender for a business, before they, you know, take on a contract. It doesn't have to be. As long as you have the self-awareness that, okay, these two things I've not been exposed to, they're quite new to me. My question to you is, do you have the capability to put in place a strategy to learn them, right? Get a mentor, get somebody else to ask, right? Do a tutorial, whatever the case might be. If you have the capability to learn, don't turn down something because there's one or two elements that, you know, you're not quite sure in terms of or you've never tackled before. Mm, wow, man. That's, that's, that's amazing. That's a practical tool right there, right? Plan about it. Like, check and see, you know, what is this thing about and can I really do it? You know, yeah, I think Fiona is talking to me today. Man, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, Life Coach says the plan in place uh, changes a lot, definitely. Alenu Dinea says, I just love the way, uh, how how transparent Fiona is. I mean, that's 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 awesome. Lady Poppy saying, great content. My first time here. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, uh, Mindset Coach saying, we believe in you. Yeah, people are going to give you a contract. They believe in you. Alenu Za, Alenu Magatim Za, thank you for the gifts for Fiona, as well as Life Coach Subu and Dineo. Thank you for sharing the live. So there's one thing as well, and Irene, thank you for um, you know for the following guys who are following as well. So there was a question here before we you know we go into and I know you've already started touching on some of the solutions already, uh, but just also a question on the effects um, of it. And Dineo, a little Dineo is saying pricing is a hot topic here, right? In terms of how do you price your stuff? How does the, that factor in? you know, with imposter syndrome, you know, to say, okay, how much can I really charge for this? Uh, and and uh, how, how is that like a, a effect that you have seen? Absolutely. And that's a really good question, particularly for entrepreneurs, right? 
So if you deva- if, if your perception of the work and the skill that you have is incorrect, right? So you've got a distorted perception that you devalue your skills, right? Maybe you've been doing something for years, you are good at it. People tell you that you're good at it. You can even compare with maybe similar products, similar services that actually this is like a rank above the rest, right? So imposter syndrome, right? That feeling that you're not as good as people think that you are, it might affect your pricing because you might actually devalue your service by not thinking, you know, I guess because of how you feel about yourself. In fact, I I was... um, and I, I find this regularly. So in some instances, I will be doing a project. Maybe I need fellow industry colleagues to, you know, to, to come and give me their rates because maybe I, I need like help or support. Right. And I find in instances where someone is undercharging for their work. And, you know, I, I usually I'm usually quite upfront in saying, you know, excuse me, just tell me the thinking around your pricing. Right. Why are you charging this much? Right. And especially for someone that I know is good, you know, the quality is good and I know what other people charge for it. Right. And sometimes even very mediocre people, people that are not as accomplished as them. So which is true. Right. I mean, some people are very confident in things that are quite <laughs> mediocre. And they talk the talk. <laughs> exactly. Then you have the opposite where you've got brilliant professionals. Uh, and I especially find it, I guess, as I mentioned in And I think groups that are also systematically disadvantaged, so like females, black females, et cetera, right? It's like, well, why are you undercharging? Because the service is good, it's solid, um, and don't devalue your level of skill, right? Because they feel like, no, I need to learn some more, I need to do this some more, et cetera, et cetera. And I've had conversations, as I said, with some people in my networks, in my circles, where I feel that they're significantly undercharging. And normally when I say, you know, tell me, just tell me your thinking behind how you arrived at this amount. And it's very often where they feel like, you know, I'm still learning, I'm still starting. And I'm like, and usually when I have the conversation with them, it's like, okay, let's let's unpack this. I'm still learning, I'm still new. How long have you been doing this thing, right? Let's look at your track history. Let's look at your portfolio. Let's look at what you have done. And you're like, you're not a novice. You're not, you know, you're not someone that is still under trial, right? But in some instances, it might be that maybe we started, you know, we're learning to do something. And our mind, even when we've achieved the success, our mind doesn't catch up. So you're still thinking about that entrepreneur from four years ago, you know, that was still fighting their feet, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why in that regard, I have to almost say to them, no, actually look at the quality of your work, right? And it's, as I said, it's an, it's a distorted evaluation of self because you're undervaluing yourself because if you look at, and, and often when I say, look at other people who are doing similar work at you as you, right? And maybe let's say we pick a name. How different is this person from you, right? This person is charging, you know, full commercial rates, et cetera, et cetera. So in many instances, yeah, it's, it's very important because how you see yourself is going to reflect on how you charge for the skills or whatever service that you're providing, right? And I like to do benchmarks, you know, ever mm. so often. And it has helped, I guess, in a way, it's helped with, with my imposter syndrome where maybe I do a particular, I, I remember I, I used to do, I, I do regular um, contributions on radio. I used to do... Um, uh, what you call it, I, I used to be a resident psychologist on a TV show, on the morning show um, for the uh, last year and then the year before that. And in some instances, I guess because of my imposter syndrome, I would feel like, oh, you know, geez, have I done justice to this topic, right? Whatever topic that we were talking about. And mm-hmm. I would go and check other experts, you know, even international experts. Maybe when I'm researching the topic, I'll see maybe there was a podcast or, you know, there was a similar conversation, radio show, podcast, etc., or even let's say a um, YouTube video that was done by someone that I consider like, you know, a high level expert in this area. And I promise you nine times out of 10, they've literally said the same things that I have, you know, they, there's nothing they've wow. said there that I didn't know. Right. So I was mm. like, wait a minute, why do mm. I undermine mm. myself? Mm. And, and that's a way, because I remember my very, very first ever radio interview, they approached me to talk about something and I, I almost wanted to decline. I said to them, okay, can I let you know tomorrow if I'm available? But because I was like, I need to know, like, can I really talk about this, right? And because I didn't trust myself. So I spent the whole night researching, reading everything, right? And it wasn't like any new information. And then I went and I listened because a, another radio station had done a similar topic with like some, you know, doctor so-and-so. And there was also like a CEO of some business, etc. So these are like high level people. And I think my comfort came when I listened to that podcast, like literally everything I had written on the notes of what I was going to say was what they said. Right. So do Mm. that benchmark, because if there's someone that you highly look up to in your industry or someone that you feel like, oh, this is a well accomplished person. And let's say you are aware or familiar with their prices, depending on the industry that you're in, you know, ask yourself, why am I not? charging or if you want to let's say benchmark yourself right because in some instances you undermine yourself because you think that well they've done this more than me and whatever the case 
But very often when you unpack what you have done, your accomplishments, you actually realize that, wait a minute, but I'm actually a pretty big deal, right, in whatever it is that I'm doing. So I guess to that point, one of the ways, and for those of you that are sitting here and you feel that you deal with imposter syndrome, I want you to do this exercise, right? So if you're in corporate, that's fine as well. It still works. So think about the last few years, you know, as, as far back as you want to go and write down your accomplishments. So don't worry now whether, whether you think it's a big deal or not. Write down things that you have done that you are proud of, right? So got a promotion, got put on this high profile project, you know, got to go and present at Exco or at Manco or whatever the case might be. If you're an entrepreneur, you can think about grew my business, you know, got this contract, mm, got started this deal. employing people. Yes, started employing. So don't worry now in terms of, you know, whether you think it's a big deal, but something that you feel like was a positive, I guess, improvement on your business, right? So so don't, don't doesn't have to be like, you know, doubled your profits or anything of that sort. Write down that list. And I almost, you can even do this with, let's say, like someone that you live with, right? Because so, so the first exercise is write down that list. And they said, don't give an evaluation to it because imposter syndrome sometimes makes you devalue. So it could be the fact that within your first year of business, you hired two people. That's a big deal, right? Because most businesses spend years without even being able to hire someone. But you devalue it because you feel like, oh, well, you know, it just happened. And, you know, it was just a coincidence, you know, that we got this contract. And that it, 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 there's no such things as coincidences. So I want you to remove the element of is coincidence. Oh, but this contract came because my brother knew so it, it doesn't matter, right? You, you, you got awarded something or you did something for your business. And once you've written those things, you could even rank them if you want. So if you wanted, you could rank them in terms of, you know, big deal to like lesser deal, but everything is a big deal, right? So let's start with the element that everything is a big deal because when you have imposter syndrome, you have a tendency to devalue stuff. That's why I'm saying it doesn't matter if it seems like a small thing. And then after that, I want you to go through the tasks, I guess the things you've written down and say what you did, right? So you might be like, oh, I got this contract, you know, because my brother introduced me to this person, right? So you almost mm -hmm. remove yourself from the equation because you feel you didn't deserve it. But it's like, well, actually, yes, my brother did introduce me to this person, but I had to pitch. I had to put in a proposal. I had to go present. And this person decided they want to spend their money on me, right? That, that's not luck. So it might be by chance that you bumped into someone who was looking for your services. But the fact that, you know, give yourself the credit to say, well, it's actually because I put together a good proposal. I was competitive in my pricing. I was ABC. And in fact, you know, they've continued to work with me, right? So give your, basically, I want you to say what you did to make that happen, right? So you hired two employees. You might think, oh, well, you know, uh, it just happened that, you know, there were these two grads that were unemployed. Well, the fact that, you know, you took the initiative because I always say to people with imposter syndrome, someone who had the same situation as you, the same resources as you was in the right place at the right time, didn't make of the opportunity what you made it. So it doesn't matter yeah. if you feel some variables, you, you were just like, there's no such thing as luck because I could be in a room with a CEO, with whoever, and I still, you know, cannot get you a meeting it, with them. Right? Right? Exactly. Right. So, so, so don't undermine the fact that something you feel like it, it happened by chance or by luck. Uh, so learn, and, and this exercise is to help you internalize or to give yourself the credit to say, we landed this client, not because my brother introduced me to him, but because I went and I made a pitch and they liked my business, right? They liked my proposal, right? So, so almost like give yourself the credit. And once you've done that for the, those activities, it's going to almost like help to start training your mind to see yourself as an important variable to your success, right? Because people with imposter syndrome often feel that, it was by luck or by chance. No one else pitched. That's why I got it. Well, even if, let's say, you're the only person that pitched, if your, if your presentation was trash, no one's going to spend their money on a trash presentation because it's the only person that pitched to me, right? So learn to internalize that by saying, actually, it's because of my good presentation skills, it's because of my good business skills, right? And once you've been able to almost locate yourself in whatever the big or the small success is, you know, start to get into the habit or the practice. Um, and this is more, I guess, for you to to almost like hear you, you know, it's almost like you want to engage the other senses by saying it out loud. So find a friend, find a mentor, I don't know, find someone that you live with and say, look, I want to start doing a better job at appreciating and internalizing my successes. So therefore, I want to speak to you about things that I'm proud of that I've achieved in the last two years. So basically share and talk about that list to someone because then you want to hear yourself saying it out loud. And, you know, I guess, you know, maybe even potentially get feedback um, from that other person that you're speaking to. But the, the, 
one of the consistent ways to get over imposter syndrome is to learn to document your achievements, learn to internalize them, right? And this is something you should do on a regular basis. So on a monthly basis, some, I know some clients that even do it weekly. So every week they'll think of something that went well and how they played a role in that, right? Because as I mentioned, you have to retrain your mind from, you know, giving too much credit to, you know, it, it's by luck, it's by chance, I don't deserve to be here by actually locating yourself in that success, right? So in that regard, speaking to someone, you know, in a safe space, like a, it, it just helps you to almost, or sometimes you can even speak it in front of a mirror. But I, it, it's a way for you to practice being able to speak highly of yourself, being able to own it. So even go as braggadocious as you want, right? So being able to own and say, I'm a really, really brilliant business person. This is why this happened, right? Another business person was not going to land this contract. So that's an important thing um, to consciously do because it's not something that's going to come naturally to you when you've got imposter syndrome. You have to start forcing your mind to consciously see yourself differently, right? Because imposter syndrome is not cured by getting more achievements and doing better at your business it is cured by how you feel about yourself and how you perceive uh, and internalize the achievements that you have whether they are big or small wow 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 that's amazing mindset coach parties are saying award winning <laughs> award winning for sure award winning for sure uh, thank you and then to today saying appreciating and internalizing our six our success right you know, self-validation, you know, very important. Uh, Life Coach is saying, thanks thanks for, for this, Fiona. I feel like now I can help some of my staff members. You know, one of my staff members who does themselves. Uh, Sherry, good morning. And, uh, and uh, okay, Lady Pop, this is a perspective, this is perspective, a perspective changing conversation for me. I'm grateful that I, 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 I bumped into this life, right? Numbuk uh, Melelo is saying, I've been battling with this thing all my life. Now I know exactly what the meaning of it. Now at least, you know, she can define it. Uh, user 5475. User 5475 uh, is saying imposter syndrome, you even struggle within groups, teams, because you wonder if your inputs will be valuable enough. And Manoka Career Coach is saying, you know, it is very important to, to benchmark for, for the reasons Fiona is saying. Uh, Len with Zai saying, yo, this is deep, you know, deep indeed. And Red Shark still learning. And Pax, good morning. So, Fungai, thank you for sharing the live. And Len with Dineo as well, thank you for sharing the live. Um, and I uh, just want to acknowledge a few people. H HOI Marketing, thank you for li the likes, guys. Lady Poppy, Emily, Nompu Melelo, Finance with K, user 5475. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, and, and yeah, and the gifts as well, Zai. Guys, please, let's like the live, guys. Let's tap our screens as many times as we can. TikTok doesn't stop you, man. We are getting 13,600 likes. Let's get it to 20,000 likes right now. So before I open it for questions as well, I just had this one comment as well via uh, WhatsApp. This is from Mo. It says, today's topic is talking to me, insecurities from childhood, from teachers. That abuse made me realize that foundation phase educators are to be fully equipped and dedicated because the child's future starts there you know i don't know if you want to also just talk about it as we'll talk about that as well as well as you know i think the other sort of just addressing sort of the other causes of imposter syndrome like being in a minority group i know we might have touched on that high achieving parents and success came quickly yeah so in terms of and in fact as i mentioned a lot of our psychological makeup our behavior stem from childhood environmental aspects some of it is personality traits you know which i guess we are born with right uh, and they manifest themselves in different ways as we as we grow up but you know the i guess the beauty of being aware of something is you can you can do something about it so as i mentioned i don't think imposter syndrome ever completely disappears right but being aware of it helps you to question your motives or your feelings in that time. So it means that when I go in a meeting and I'm feeling that I don't deserve to be here, I'm scared to make bold suggestions. You know, I think as someone mentioned, because I don't know if my opinion will be valuable. You know, I'm the only black person here. I'm the only female here. I'm the only whatever the case, right? And, you know, some of those structural things are not a fault of our own, right? It is because if structurally, you know, you are biased for whatever reason, right? Yes, the, the, the system then does lend itself, you know, to, to treating you, you know, a little bit more harsher, etc. But I find that once I recognize it, um, I'm able to deal with it. So with my imposter syndrome, even when it does pop up, I know in that moment that actually 
Why am I feeling that I don't deserve to be here? Why am I feeling, uh, you know, like I don't have, I don't qualify to give this opinion or to do this proposal, right? And in many instances, I find that it's because of imposter syndrome, right? And then I go back to those achievements, to that track history. So this is what, so, so for those of you, especially when you're afraid to give an opinion because you don't think, is it going to be right? You know, in many instances, especially if it's within your area of expertise or something that you know, right? You, you are like, I, I in fact, many of you have probably not given an opinion and then someone else says it, right? And everyone is, agrees. And you're like, oh, why didn't I say that? Or why did I hesitate, right? And it's about trusting yourself, trusting your opinion. You don't need to do more, right? So you don't need, you know, I remember one of my clients saying, you know, she she wouldn't give opinions, but then she would go and verify or like check the information. And like 100% of the time, she actually was right in the first place. So learning to trust yourself, but a good way to practice is to release yourself from the fact that, okay, this is going to be like a groundbreaking input opinion, right? You need to start engaging with the things that you're fearful of, right? Such as giving a contribution and say, well, actually, mm -hmm. one of two things could happen. I could give the opinion and, you know, it could be well received and they could say, oh, wonderful, you know, that's great. And in fact, and I want to say this carefully, sometimes the quantity of input right, is as important, uh, I guess, as the quality. Because if you're that person that never gives an opinion, then people don't know your value, right? They don't actually know that you've got good sound opinions or inputs where this matter is concerned, right? Because you're holding back. And the second thing, if you're afraid that it's going to get shut down, it's going to sound stupid, it's going to, that's okay, right? So allow yourself, because of that fear of failure, to say, well, let's say it's shut down and they don't think it's the greatest idea. That's okay, because you know what? The next time I'm going to try again. And on top of that, don't amplify it um, by believing that now is going to, you know, now people are going to think I'm stupid because I said what. People, even the experts say one or two things that get shut down or that don't agree, get agreed on, right? So don't over identify with the fact that they shut something down, right? In fact, they've heard your opinion, they didn't agree with it, and that's okay, right? So in preempting that fear is to say, well, what, what, will, what will I do, right? What's the worst that will happen if they don't think this is a good idea? No, well, they'll, <laughs> exactly. They'll disagree. And probably forget about it, right? It's not a reflection of my entire career, right? It's just, people are not going to think I'm suddenly incompetent because I mentioned one thing that someone disagreed with. And it's the same. When you're an entrepreneur, when you're a business uh, person, right, you, people are engaging with you for a service or a product that I guess they, they want to get a perception of competence from you. So in that regard, even the opinions that you give, the suggestions you give to your clients, you, you need to create that comfort that you know what you're talking about. So if you're apprehensive, if you're hesitant, you know, people are, it's going to come across and they'll be like, well, actually, this person sells this thing. But when I'm asking them about the different options, they don't really seem quite confident, right? And, you know, even if you think like, well, what if I give this opinion and the client doesn't like it? That's okay. Because what you want to do in that moment is to demonstrate that you have opinions where this is concerned, right? Whether someone agrees with it or not. And that will also affect, as I mentioned, or shape how your clients perceive you. Because if you don't have that perception of confidence, if you're giving suggestions, right, they want to feel that you know what you're doing. Um, and in many instances, if you're doing the business, you likely do know what you're doing. So don't hold back and feel that, okay, this CEO is going to think this is ridiculous for me to, to, to suggest this. And I find that the more you practice, right, and whether you get shut down, whether you get a yes, in fact, you're probably going to get more positive responses, which will build your confidence. And the ones that are negative, you know how to deal with them and recover, right? So tell yourself, I'll recover. And the next time I'm still going to give that opinion to the CEO, right? Uh, irrespective of what happened last time. No, no, that's that's awesome. And, and you know, I, uh, I just, and, and what you're saying, right? But before I do that, let me just acknowledge Rob's for the likes, Emily, Luca, Kileto, the Duchess, Faye, Jess. Thank you guys for the likes, man. Guys, let's like the live. Let's let's get to 20,000 likes. And uh, you can just tap your screens as many times as you want. It's for free. Uh, you know, Emily saying, and when you're not confident, it, confident, it will show. And, and I think like what you're saying, I think it starts there in primary school, right? It starts wherever it is, where you're like, you know what, what's going to happen if I, people don't want to raise their hands, people don't want to do this, they're fearful. And, uh, and, and of course, maybe when you're, when it's a, 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 there, there's a barrier of a negative environment where you're laughed at and whatever it is, it might be a problem. However, as you are saying, what I found out as well is that even when you actually verbalize, the more you verbalize, you know, what, what you're actually thinking of, even if it's actually wrong, the good thing is you actually get, you know, you get course corrected, right? Rather than internalizing something which is wrong, you know, you, you never get an opportunity to actually correct it. 
So I think that's the good thing as well with just contributing. Because at least you know that, you know, this is wrong. And actually what your mind does, mm. it will then lead you to the correct answer, right? Mm. To say that, okay, this way we were thinking, because maybe it was just the way you were thinking. So let's change the way we are thinking. Let's look at it from a different angle. Then you be, you know, you start getting the correct answers rather than just keeping quiet and, 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 and being stuck with the wrong, you know, answer. You might even write that in the exam, you know. <laughs> it can be bad for you, <laughs> you know, when you're now in that, uh, you know, situation, right? So I think verbalizing things and just putting them out there is quite important. Uh, so, so, so Fiona, you know, I don't know how many more minutes you have left. So we've got so some... I've... Sorry? I've got a minute. I've got a nine o'clock, but I, I've got oh. like, I can do 30 more seconds. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 30 more seconds. Guys, so sorry. I... I, I... Yeah, Niwa, so sorry. I know there were some requests, some questions here, but we can get Fiona back another time. Uh, let's so guys, I mean, if you let's follow Fiona here. And where else can people get you, Fiona? So you can get me on my website. Um, I'm on most social media. So I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, Face. Oh no, I'm not on Facebook. Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and uh, yeah, on my website as well. So you and of course here on TikTok. It's it's as Fiona Martin. Yeah, so it's 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 Fiona Martin everywhere on Twitter. It's Miss Fiona, so M S Fiona. Awesome, awesome, Fiona. Thank you very much for your time, and really appreciate you, guys. If you want to know next when we go live with Fiona, please, you know, sign up for our WhatsApp group. The link is in the bio in my link tree, and please follow Fiona right now. Hey, it's a life coach is saying I love uh, Fiona's LinkedIn post. Fiona, thank you very much. Any last words for people here? Yeah, I think my parting words to you is, you know, where you, when you're fearful of something, you know, we often want to preserve, I guess, you know, our, you know, we want to preserve that shame maybe that comes with, okay, I said something wrong. Uh, you want to preserve your self-esteem, right, by having someone shut down your idea, etc. But think of it in the opposite way, right? What are the consequences of you holding back, right? The consequences of you holding back are people will never know your opinion, right? Uh, probably a very valuable opinion that they should know it might impact the perception of competence that people have of you, right? So you holding back, yes, you want to protect your self-esteem, but at what cost, right? It comes at cost around your career progress, your business progress, etc. So always think about what you're losing out because in some instances, that can be a great motivator to say, yes, okay, so, you know, is me having, I guess, a self-esteem issue or, or not feeling so great because someone shut my idea? What about the the actual benefits, right, that come with it, because there are certainly many benefits around it. And I think, yeah, with imposter syndrome, as I mentioned, the awareness of it is usually the starting point, because then you, you, once you recognize it, you know how to either shut it down or work around it when it arises, right? And then, of course, it doesn't impact the decisions that you make, you know, based on fear or based on a, a distorted image of yourself. No, awesome, awesome. Thank you very much, Fiona, for your time. Thank you, much appreciated, and thank you for always just saying yes to come everyone is appreciating you thank you for your time no it's a pleasure cheers all right cheers cheers bye-bye